Thank you for being here this morning on this uh, beautiful spring morning. <laughs> the weather's kind of hard to figure out, isn't it? It's just with, around Christmas, we could have, the one for the rain gone uh, had a picnic or not golfing or something, I guess. But they're still saying it's going to be a rough winter. At least I've heard that from some people. Uh, and we do still have January and February. Last January and February were pretty rough, so. Uh, this was found, this is a uh, gift card to Barnes & Noble. It was found in, I think, one of the pews or something. If, if anybody knows anything about that or if it belongs to you, I'm going to leave it right here. And uh, you can come get it uh, after worship. <coughs> if you are visiting with us, we're glad you're here. Uh, 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 many of you know that uh, Randy, our uh, full-time minister, is out of town. He's visiting... Uh, relatives for the holidays, and so uh, I'm filling in for him this morning. If you are visiting with us, we do want to invite you to come back every opportunity you have to uh, uh, to hear Randy speak, uh, but it's good to have you with us this morning. Well, it's the end of the year. It's a time of year when many people uh, tend to resolve to do some things differently, and, that, and that's probably good. As we begin a new year, it's probably a good time to uh, take stock of what we have been doing and see if we need to do some things differently, <clears throat> or it might be that we decide to do some things better, and so people make, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. Uh, um, I, it seems to me like for a person who wants to grow, it shouldn't be just be a, 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 an annual thing, a yearly uh, New Year's resolution, but something that we should do on a regular basis if we uh, have a desire to improve. Um, the book of Proverbs is full of all kinds of advice which will make our lives better. It's really from the mind of God, of course. Uh, lots of uh, uh, principles in the, in the book of Proverbs. And um, for many of the Proverbs, we could spend uh, a couple of hours just talking about one. But I want to go to the book of Proverbs this morning and to remind us of, um, of a few principles, a, a few things that that are, are probably just reminders for us, but one of the things about God's Word is that it always uh, challenges us. Um, for the most part, the principles we see in God's Word, and that's true with the book of Proverbs, um, for the most part, those are, are relatively easy principles to understand. They, they're not always easy to live out uh, consistently in our lives. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 discusses the rewards of wisdom. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter 3. <coughs> Often in Proverbs we see uh, these uh, short little Proverbs put forth in, in uh, almost a machine gun sort of way. You know, just kind of a, a bam, 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 short little concepts, short little principles or Proverbs. And so we're going to look at some of the, the principles from God's words in Proverbs uh, chapter 3 this morning. You can call them resolutions if you want. <clears throat> but one, as I said, one of the things about the Proverbs is they, they challenge us. They challenge us in our lives. Um, so, so let's look at, at a few of those in, in, from uh, Proverbs chapter 3. He begins uh, this section by saying, My son, do not forget my teaching but let your heart keep my commandments. Well, the, Hebrews, uh, the Hebrew wording there uh, carries with it the idea of, of don't lay aside those things. Don't lay aside or, or, or mislay uh, God's word. Um, <clears throat> you need to guard um, and provide some protection for his commandments. Uh, God's commandments are, 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 are not... Uh, an, an option for us. And, and yet, as I said, it's sometimes uh, a challenge for us to live out in our lives on a daily basis. But he begins this section by saying, don't forget the teaching. Uh, uh, let your heart keep my commandments. And interesting, <clears throat> there in, in verse 2, he says, the length of days and years of your life and peace they will add to you. As a general principle, that's true, I believe. And, and that's really what the Proverbs are. It, it, it's saying that if we do keep God's commandments, generally speaking, our lives will be better, we'll live longer, we'll be more productive. Verse 3 says, Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. 
Christians should have, uh, as, a, as a part of our makeup, we should have kindness as, as, a, as a part of who we are, and certainly truthfulness uh, in our lives and in our dealings with other, others. Having kindness, or in, 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 in some cases the word is translated mercy, uh, in dealings with others. Um, you know, you, 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 can, you can have uh, kindness uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, but it's a compliment. If, if someone says, you know, that's a kind person, that, that's, a, that's quite a compliment for, for someone to, to be described in those kinds of ways. Um, you know, it, it carries with it a general attitude in our lives, in, in how we talk, how we interact with people, how we act, what we do. Um, and, 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 it, and it carries with it, I believe, uh, a lot of little things. You know, things like saying thank you uh, it, it is, an, it is a way that we exhibit kindness. Um, even in we are, when we are in difficult uh, situations, maybe personality clashes and things like that, um, a, a kind person is, is kind even in those situations. <clears throat> you know, we can disagree without being disagreeable, uh, someone once said. And, and a kind person is able to do that, to use tact, in, even, in, even in disagreements and, and in arguments. The, the word truth here uh, means a stability or a trustworthiness. <clears throat> that is, others uh, can know that they depend on you. We're, we're true, we're solid. Uh, in our in our interactions with other people, and and verse four kind of uh, tells the results of verse three. There it says, if you do that, you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of man. For us to be kind and solid is will will bring us uh, in, into a relationship where we have a, a good relationship with God as well as man. Well, verse 5, and, and, and actually verse 5 and 6 are, are fairly well-known verses uh, for a lot of people. But verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. <clears throat> Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust God with all of your heart. All of your heart. Uh, boy, what a challenge that is. Do you, do you trust God with all of your heart? You know, if I'm honest with myself, I can't say that I always, every day, every minute of every day, I always trust God with all of my heart. Um, that's, a tall, that's a tall order. That's a tall challenge for us to, to, in every area of our lives, in every way, to trust God with all of our heart. Too often we lean on our own understanding and we don't trust God with all of our heart. You know, Jeremiah, centuries ago, said in Jeremiah 10, 23, it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. And it's not. We're not smart enough to call all of the shots for ourselves. And so we have to, have to remember that. And we have to remember that God's commands are for our own good. And, and that's where the trust comes in. Even if we don't like it, even if we don't understand it, even if we don't agree with it. It takes trust, and that's actually where trust comes in. Trust is needed when we don't understand it, or maybe we don't agree with it, or maybe we don't like it. That's where trust is needed. If somebody tells me to do something that I like, and I agree with, and I understand, that doesn't take any trust, because I agree with it, I like it, I'm in favor of it. That, that doesn't, isn't what takes trust. What takes trust is when we, when we have those, those conflicts maybe at times. What happens when we lean on something that's not strong enough to hold us? You know, you lean on something, has, and, 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 and probably we've all in some way or another experienced this kind of thing, where we lean on something and maybe it, it gives way a little bit. Uh, and, and, and maybe we either fall or we almost fall. Well, the proverb here says, don't lean on your own understanding. If we lean on our own understanding, we're going to be disappointed at times. How, how many times, think, just reflect for a minute in your life. Have there been times where you trusted in and leaned on your own understanding? 
and you ended up falling. We're not smart enough to make all of the calls ourselves. And so the proverb says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your paths straight. In all our ways acknowledge God. Well, that, that carries with it, I think, a, a number of different ideas and thoughts and meanings. But I think it carries with it the idea of a, a, a general knowledge that we live our life acknowledging God in all things. It, it, it um, reminds me a little bit of James where he says, you, you know, you talk about you're going to go here and do this and plan that and do that. But he says, you should say if the Lord wills. And I think that's a part of acknowledging God in this, in, in, in remembering <clears throat> that there is a sense, and certainly in every area of our life, that we really can't do anything without God. We need to remember that we can't even take a breath without God and His blessings. Acknowledging God includes being thankful for His blessings, too. And it's a challenge for us, I think especially maybe in this country, to to be as thankful as we ought to be. I don't know what's a strange paradox that the more we get, the natural tendency is to be less thankful for what we have because we have a tendency to be self-sufficient. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Well, the, uh, the uh, idea, there's an old saying when we, we talk about serving God and, and, and uh, not being wise in our own eyes, there's, a, there's an old saying that there's too many people who want to serve God, but only in the role as an advisor. We, we, again, we lean on our own understanding. How about you? Is there any advice you'd like to give God? Well, we wouldn't say that out loud. But how do we live? Sometimes we want to be advisors to God. Whether we admit it or not, we really know nothing compared to God. If you think about it, we might as well just admit that God is God and we are not. Because God is so far above us in his knowledge and everything else. If God forgot 99% of what he knows, he'd still know a million times more than I do. And so it's important for us to not be wise in our own eyes. Somebody said, Did it ever, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever just occurred to God? Things don't just occur to God. God doesn't say, hey, I never thought about that. We do. Why? Because God's ways are so far above us. He knows so much more than we do. And so, do not be wise in your own eyes. And, and he, he, he includes there, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. The topic of, of the fear of God is repeated many, 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 many times in the Bible. And specifically in Proverbs alone, it's, it's uh, repeated numerous times. And yes, there, this means that we're to have reverence for God. That's, that's what we usually say. And, and that's true. It means we're to have reverence for God. But there are other words for reverence that are not used. Uh, most of the time when it, when it is, talks about the fear of the Lord, it's not talking about the, they, and they, the word is not used that means reverence. There's other words for that. It means fear. Now, admittedly, fear is... Um, a, 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 a base motivation or, or, or we might say an immature motivation. And, and it's not just fear either. I, I, don't, I don't believe that the Bible teaches that, that we're to only fear God. But I think there is a mixture there. there there's nothing wrong with us deciding to do something when we're, we're tempted, we decide not to do it, based on a fear of losing our souls. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's good. And so this, this concept of the fear of God is one that is repeated. But again, it's not just fear. James said the demons believe and they, they shudder. 
because of, of fear. But the demons are not saved. They may be afraid of God, but they're not saved. And so God wants us to grow so that our motivation becomes love and not just fear. But when we look at our sinfulness and think about God's power and God's love and God's mercy and God's grace, we should be motivated by love to obey him. We don't have time to, to fully look at this, this idea, this concept of, of fear of God, but suffice it to say that, that we're to leave some room to have a healthy fear of the being who can, with a thought, extinguish this universe. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's why it is so often referred to in the Bible. Turn away from evil. Turn away from evil, it said. And we need to remember, too, that God sometimes defines evil differently than we do. He follows up with verse, uh, verse 8 there by saying, It will be healing for your body and refreshment to your bones. He said, he's saying if you, if you remember to not be wise in your own eyes, it will be healing to your body. Verse 9, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. Reminds me of uh, Matthew 6.33 where Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom. Well, it says here, honor God from your wealth. The tendency for some people is to say, oh, well, I don't have wealth. Well, yeah, we do. If we live in America, we have wealth. If we live in America, even by the standards of the poor, you have wealth compared to the rest of the world. And so we shouldn't just give lip service to that. this. We should actually live it. And I, and I would say this, here in 21st century America, when you get paid, take the top, first of all, and determine that you're going to give that to God. I think that's an important thing. And I would say, in my opinion, a minimum of 10%. First. First. And that means if, okay, here's the paycheck. Uh, boy, if we give this much to the contribution this week, we're not going to be able to go out to eat. Or we're going to have to cancel this thing. Or we're going to have to do without our smartphone or our dumb phone. But, but it's talking about put God first. And whatever it is, off the top, the first thing, that's not mine. That's going to God. And we give that to God first. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of your produce. And then verse 10 reminds us that we can't outgive God. It says, so your barns will be filled with plenty. That sounds a lot like the passage in Malachi where, where God basically dares the people. He's daring them to try to outgive him. Verse 11 then my son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delights. Don't reject the discipline of the Lord. Fools reject discipline. Fools reject discipline if we're talking about uh, biblical. They reject God's discipline and they reject all of those kinds of things. In fact... You know, I know some of you parents tell your kids don't use the word stupid. Well, sorry, it's in the Bible, and I'm not encouraging you to have your kids say stupid. But turn over just a couple of pages to Proverbs chapter 12. <coughs> Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. You don't like to be reproved? You don't like to be disciplined? <clears throat> Sorry, God's word says you're stupid. And, the, and, the, and that's the truth. People who don't want to be disciplined are stupid. Because it goes back to them being wise in their own eyes. Mature and wise people understand that discipline can and will make us better. If our attitude is a godly one, and if our attitude is right, we're to accept God's correction and his discipline. And one of the main ways, I mean, I, I believe God does that in lots of ways, 
He disciplines us through His Word. But one of the, the main ways that correction and discipline comes from God is that it comes through the authorities in our lives. It doesn't matter if it's our parent or the policeman or a boss or, or whoever other our authorities are. God disciplines us through our authorities. The world doesn't have a biblical concept of authority. If you don't know that, take a look. The world and, and the way that, that authority is described in the Bible are completely different. And so we as Christians need to be sure that we have a biblical view of authority and discipline and not the world's view of it. And I, I should add, one of the worst things is for a person who's in a position of authority to abuse that authority. And I've known some people who are in positions of authority who didn't understand authority. And that's not good well, we could talk about that for a long time. God still says, submit to the authorities. Don't be stupid. Don't reject God's discipline. Learn to appreciate it and learn from it and become better from it. Well, in, in Proverbs 3 here, verses 13 through, twi uh, through 26, and we're not going to read all that or, or comment on it, but in verses 13 through 26, it's a section where he speaks of wisdom as, as, a, as a person. He personifies wisdom and, and, and has a, a number of things to say about wisdom there. But I'm going to jump on down to verse 27. He says, Do not hold, withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. I think that's related to being kind. It can be a simple thing, but I, I think we need to remind ourselves when we have an opportunity to do something for someone else, if we can do it, then we should do it. That's an important principle, I think, in, in, the, in the Bible. If you can do it, do it. Give somebody a compliment. Pay for something for someone else. Tell someone how much you appreciate them. <clears throat> you know, we don't do things so that people will praise us or thank us or appreciate it. But it, it's, it's nice when you do something, when somebody says, hey, I, I really appreciate you doing that. that. That usually means quite a bit to us. Say thank you, say please. And as I mentioned before, even when you're in a difficult situation, we can give something to somebody by being kind to them and by being um, helpful to them. Verse 28 emphasizes that we're not to pro procrastinate. Don't say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I'll give it to you, when you have it with you. If you have something that you can do for someone else, do it. Verse 29 is really sort of the opposite, but it's the opposite truth. Do not devise harm against your neighbor while he lives in security beside you. And so the proverb is saying... If you have an opportunity to do something for someone, do it. Don't devise evil against the people that you know. It says the neighbor, uh, but I think it applies really to anybody we know. Don't, don't plan to, to hurt someone else. Don't, don't scheme ways to hurt other people. Uh, that, that's, that's really a pretty evil thing. Now, we all do things that hurt other people. But we need to ask ourselves if it was intentional or unintentional. You know, we, we unintentionally offend or hurt other people from time to time. He says, don't plot to do evil against other people. Verse 30 commands us to just not be a contentious person. Do not, cause, do not contend with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Don't jump to conclusions. <clears throat> Some people like to look for a fight, it seems like, wherever they go. But he's saying, don't do that. Some people are too easily offended. They'll, they'll be ready to fight you at the drop of a hat. Don't be that way. Relax. Don't jump to conclusions. Give people the benefit of the doubt as far as motives. If someone, if someone does something that hurts me, I should try to give them the benefit of the doubt, at least as far as the motives, and not assume that they were scheming and plotting and trying to make my life miserable. 
The next principle naturally follows, verse 31, do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. Don't envy a person of, of violence. These are people who are, uh, through cheating and treachery or, or whatever else, may have collected uh, some riches, some earthly riches. And he's saying, don't, don't envy them. They got it through dishonest means. It's only going to lead you to become like them if you envy them. Verse 32 says that devious people are an abomination to God. But he has an intimate relationship with righteous people. And so it's an encouragement about our attitudes and how we interact with people in our lives. Verse 33, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers, yet he gives grace to the afflicted. The wise will inherit honor, <clears throat> but fools display dishonor. If you forget about what is important to the world, just observe people for a little while and you'll see that that's true. The wise will inherit honor, but fools display dishonor. And so that sort of wraps up chapter 3, which is, which is a, a discussion of the benefits of wisdom. How, if we will fear God, keep His commandments, that our lives will be blessed. And so there you have it, some principles from God about how to live life. And I, I just, here as we, as we as, as sometimes people are in the minds of, you know, starting something new at the first of the year, going to lose weight or whatever it is, uh, let's, let's think about some of these things and let's, let's uh, determine that we're going to try to uh, think about these and do all that we can to make these things a part of our life in 2016 and beyond for that matter. God tells us, generally speaking, how we're going to be blessed if we're wise and we'll ultimately not be blessed if we reject God and His ways. And so it comes down to us accepting God's ways and wanting to live for Him. And if there's someone here today who's not a Christian, you're not living for Jesus. You're not living for God. And maybe you've been thinking about making that step, making that decision. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, we want to give the opportunity to become a Christian. No, no time like the present. We would love for someone to become a Christian here this morning. If, you're, if you are a Christian and you feel that... Uh, uh, some prayers of the congregation here would help, then we would be glad to help you with that as well. If you're here this morning and you have a need, we invite you to make it known as together we stand the same.